uh, instead of going into a light trance with our meditation, I want to read to you something from the 72 names of God from, I can't <laughs> from Rabbi Burge. And it is called A Diamond in the Rough. And I want us to all look at ourselves as growing, evolving individuals, which we are. So I'm going to say it this way as we go through history. We have the power to transform all of our hardships into beauty and strength. We will get into a positive headspace knowing that from there, anything is possible. The challenges that lie before us are there for a reason. And the light will allow us to learn from them and grow. We become our own potential. All the blessings that are already there will bring even more fulfillment and joy. Our soul's longings will be answered, and any negative situation can be turned beautiful. And, if I might, one more. This is called defying gravity. We are throwing away our doubts, our pessimisms, and our limited natures. We want to see beyond the illusions, beyond the needs to have wars. We are listening to our soul and dropping our egos and making way for real fulfillment. I promise the powers of mind over matter, and we will use them by letting go of the limited thinking of the rational mind, <coughs> by putting the spiritual above physical and everything is possible. Quick little story, some of you may have heard it. Um, there's been a war, there was a war going on for 50 years that you may or may not have heard about. It was between Canada and Flanders. Yeah, 50 years. And um, what had happened was the two countries had divided up, I guess, the Arctic Circle. And there was a small island in the middle that was solid rock. And the two countries could not figure out how to divide that island. And so one day, a Canadian soldier went to the island and he planted a Canadian flag. And he left a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Well, Flanders found out about it, and they sent a representative out, and he immediately removed the flag, planted a Flanders flag, and then he left a bottle of snops, I think they call it. Well, Canada had to re retaliate, so they came back to the island, planted another flag, planted a sign, wrote a note, and they left some more whiskey. <laughs> Flanders came back, they took the sign up, planted another sign, and left some more booze, and left a note or something, and they left. Pretty soon the countries got into it, and people from each country started coming, leaving signs, notes, flags, and booze. <laughs> it went on for 50 years. You never heard about it because it was not notorious enough. It was not destructive enough. It was not hateful enough. There were not generations of um, there were not generations of children growing up to hate another culture. If I am not leaning towards uh, alcoholism, <laughs> but I'm just saying, if all wars were fought that way, if everyone used good judgment and probably only casualty would be a few headaches, you know, hangovers and all. <laughs> but what's the harm? 
Yeah. You know, look at what's happening around the world. What's the more? And they found that in 22, they divided up this island, which was kidney shaped, and there was a natural crevice to it. Mm -hmm. And they gave this part to Canada, and this part to Flanders, and Flanders got the biggest piece. But they didn't go to war over it the way we understand war. Mm -hmm. So I just want to leave that with you and meditate on it. Mm -hmm.